another episode of Oz Sports FM. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Vladimir, and uh, beside me is my co-host, Travis. G'day, Vlad. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone out there. Now, is there everyone out there? Let's there are lots. There are <laughs> lots of people. Come the, on. The millions and millions of fans of Oz Sports uh, FM listening out there to us. It's been a action-packed uh, weekend of sport. Has been another one. It always is an action-packed weekend of sport. Well, it is, actually. Uh, it's, that's true, Travis. That's, that's quite uh, true, especially uh, the World Cup. Let's, uh, let's, we're going to kick things off with the World Cup, as this is the major event happening in our country. And uh, I guess let's, let's talk about a fantastic match of the MCG between uh, Australia v Bangladesh. Which match? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that match was supposed to be Brisbane, play. Oh, yes, sorry about that. Yes, Brisbane. That's, well, you know what it is, the World Cup is a wonderful uh, shop. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, with it, um, it, of course, washed out because of the... Uh, My brain's washed out. I think everything's washed out at the moment. <laughs> but we will try and bring some clarity <laughs> to the show. But yeah, so, uh, washed out, obviously, with a cyclone happening in Queensland, which I think... Makes it tough because Australia would have penciled that game in. They would have had that in as a win, I think, uh, against Bangladesh. Although they have lost to Bangladesh, you know, previously in a World Cup. But I think they would have put that down as, as a couple of points and probably an opportunity lost. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, obviously, the game couldn't go ahead uh, due to extreme circumstances. And uh, I believe each team gets a one point eight one point. Yeah. So, um, well, I guess if they had more Australia games here in Adelaide... Well, we had beautiful weather here, didn't we? It's a 41. Very hot. Yeah, probably perfect for cricket. Really. Perfect indeed. Yeah, very, very hot uh, here in SA. So, look, it's a, it's a yeah, bit of a shame for the fans, especially the people that would have travelled um, you know, interstate. Yeah, of course. Also yeah. Hotels, tickets, you know, and that's a bit of a nightmare. I mean, do they get their money back? Good question. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure that they would. I don't know. Would there be an opportunity? Them to get their money back due to, a, due to weather and it's a good question, isn't it? Dazza, that's our uh, recording you know, there, Dazza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's nodding his head or he's shaking his head, don't know what he's doing there, but uh, doesn't know. But yeah, that's a, interesting, isn't it? It is, and it raises the point. I mean, what you know, what do you do in that situation? Do you, do you have a claim to it? And I suppose then is there the ability to, to reschedule the match? It's obviously pretty tight um, in terms of so many games and so many days with this World Cup. Um, can they reschedule it? It seems at this point they won't, just they've given each team a point. Well, yeah, considering games are played during the week, and um, I guess that leads us to um, another, I guess, a match between England and Scotland. And uh, yeah. that's a... Strong rivalry to have there, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is. It's all facets of life. Absolutely. If you remember back however long ago it was, not so long ago, the obvious, obviously the issue with Scotland and their potential uh, independence and all those sorts of things. But England finally got a win. They got one. Yes. Fantastic. Now, they, uh, I believe uh, the score was, or it was, I was going to say Scotland, but Scotland scored 184 runs to England's 303. Yeah, Scotland never stood a chance, I don't think. Uh, England off to an absolute flyer. Um, it was always going to be difficult for Scotland to, to get that tally. Um, I think England, you know, probably finally got that win they needed to maybe kick some confidence in for them and, and maybe they'll be better as the tournament progresses. Yeah, I guess maybe they should just stick to um, supporting Andy Murray. Even though he's classified as a token uh, Englishman, well, isn't it? Uh, he's Scottish, but uh, but he represents Great Britain and England. Uh, it's weird, isn't it? Oh, look, I, I, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. I, mean, I, don't know, I do not understand that. I must admit, they compete at the, at the Olympics as Great Britain, yet they can compete at the Commonwealth Games as, as Scotland and Wales and yeah. England and, yeah. It's very interesting, very interesting indeed. But yeah, the English team are from Scotland and Ireland and South Africa. And it's all mixed in, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think there's an English player in that team. Yeah, it's very uh, blue blood flavoured, isn't it, Travis? Very much so. <laughs> very, very blue blood, blood. Uh, yeah. for all those uh, listeners out there. Google it and see what comes up with blue blood. Uh, but another fantastic um, match in the World Cup. And uh, look, this, this team, about to mention, or country, I should say, is uh, started off quite well, which is uh, India. 
India beats South Africa. They have, and I'm a little bit disappointed in South Africa. I've banged on now for the last two weeks, so I thought they were going to win the tournament. It's just a little blip, but... Did you predict that? Yeah, I did. It's pretty but, bad. Well, it's still early, mate. It's still early. So there's plenty of time for them to, to make it up. I obviously want to show you, you know, I wouldn't say that again. But, um, I mean, what do you do, though? I mean, I mean, any of India's top four batsmen just have the ability to put their stamp on the game and that's what happened yesterday um indeed i mean darwin just sensational 137 out of 100 so 126 balls yeah got um that's like near perfect yeah good strike rate isn't yeah. it fantastic um yeah that's that's a crazy crazy uh, innings right there by him and something that you that you want to see in one day you know it's a bit of that 2020 kind of uh um, batting style. Well, it isn't. I mean, you've only. I mean, the twenty twenty. I think has helped the run scoring at this World Cup. You know, batsmen have just come out and, and they're, they're just going ballistic. I mean, three hundred almost seems like a, a par score these days. Uh, particularly this World Cup, India made three hundred and seven yesterday. It seems that that's that needs to be a number to to be compared. And they made three hundred and eleven. Yeah, they did. So yeah, yeah. It's something about threes. Something. Yeah. So we we'll say something about when they're coming threes. That's yes. uh, always positive. Yes. But eighty six. Uh, 1,876 people at the MCG. That's massive. Big, big that's, crowd. That's a massive, massive crowd, considering probably 85,000 of them were Indians. Mm, yeah. uh, I don't know how many South African supporters uh, would have been. Um, well, I don't think there was many, judging by the, the noise and the, the atmosphere inside the venue. It seemed very much pro India. Yeah, which is, um, you know, they always bring out the uh, electric you know, atmosphere to mm. the to the sport. Um, yeah, the we, dynamic. Yeah, we saw that obviously at the Oval and at the MCG. They obviously brought it again with a great win. So they they they're going on onwards and upwards in this tournament, and uh, probably the team to beat, uh, to be honest. I mean, you know, well, yeah, at this stage of the defending champions, they. Uh, They've just come out on fire. I wonder where this team was, and we talked about it last week, where this team was during the tri-series and the, and the test match series with Australia. Um, seems the longer they're here, the better they've, they've gotten. And look, speaking of, obviously, going back to Australia, of course, um, you know, they're coming up against uh, New Zealand. Who yes. are defeated as well. Yes, um, another massive, massive game. And where have they come from, New Zealand, to be honest? I mean, they, they weren't good. Many years back. No, that's right. Got a bit of and stop. Yeah. To be honest, in the cricket world, and yeah. all of a sudden they're three zip yeah. in the World Cup. So they've been they've been unbelievable. The last you know, the last season really, they've just been phenomenal. Led from the front by by Brendan McCullum in this tournament. Um I don't think anyone can, can stop him at the moment. It seems it seems like it's gonna take some some of your best bowling from Australia to, to get him out cheaply and probably with a low enough score on the board that he can't influence the game too much. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's uh look, I mean, it's gonna be a, a, a crack and match, so it's hopefully it doesn't get rained out. That'd, that'd be nice. Uh, to yeah. actually see. I guess that gives uh, Michael uh, Clark, uh, I guess, another week to uh, rest up the hammy. Well, he should be 100%. He's well and truly sort of come through that period now where they, they said he was he was going to be right. He would have played, we understand, on the weekend against Bangladesh had that not been going down. So you'd expect big things from Michael Clark this week. Well, you'd, you'd hope so. Um, and we just got word in, this is from our good uh, the, the recording master behind the decks here, Dazza, and he said the tickets will be refunded for the Australia Bangladesh match. Well, that's a good result. Well. So, great result. So, that answers the, the question that we raised earlier on the show, So, which is good for the fans out there. I mean, that's a bit of a nightmare and a logistical nightmare in that too. So, uh, yeah. but look, Australia v New Zealand, uh, there's been a lot of um, uproar around the Australian Camp, Travis. You've been on this quite poly. Yes, it's a bit unsettled, yeah. Very unsettled. <laughs> and I think, uh, look, I think it's been around all season. Again, we talk about season, but so it's nothing new. But I think the issue here is is the involvement of the past players who um, seem to have good sides. Um, well, I think the greatest league spinner to ever play the game uh, is certainly involved. Oh, not Shane Warne. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, Shane Warne. <laughs> 
Shane Warne is the one who, to me, is just stirring the pot, and he needs to just step away and stay away from it. Um, I'm not sure why he, he's involved to the degree he is. He's obviously great mates with Michael Clark. He's probably great mates with everybody, isn't he? Seems to be. <laughs> seems to be. <laughs> it seems to be. And if you're following his Twitter and his Instagram feed... Well, it's, it's, it's funny that you mention Twitter, because I obviously am on Twitter out there, so it's uh, all you listeners out there, it's that black guy. That's the hashtag, or the, or the tag, or whatever you want to call it. So, but looking up with Shane Warren, I do follow the man. And uh, looking at some of his tweets um, from earlier this afternoon, now he's got quite a few. So, you know, one of his tweets says here, let the captain run the team and the coach prepare the players. Irrelevant who is captain or coach, that's how the best Australian teams are run. Is that right? Do you think that's true? Well, I've never thought of a captain uh, running a basketball team like in the NBA or the NBA. No. Um, I mean, even in the football, I mean, captains are captain, but hey, they don't run the team as such. They do a lot of on-field stuff during the match, but to be honest... But they're only following the directive of the coach, aren't they? Correct. Now, you know, I'm not an elite cricketer, so I don't know if it's a little bit different in their world, Travis. I don't think it would be that dissimilar, to be honest. But, you know, to say that type of statement is uh, interesting, by all means. And, you know, he's, he's said another tweet here as well. He's, made his, he's flushed his tweets out. You know, he's so. been on a Twitter rant. Yeah, it should maybe stay off Twitter and stick on Tinder, mate. Uh, but um, the dating app that's out there for the old time woman. But uh, even said out here, you know, there's some clarity. Some people out there seem to be making way too many assumptions. Oof, and I am mates. He's done a very good job as coach. Hmm, interesting. Well, if he's done that good of a job as coach, why does Shane Ward feel the need to be so involved in this? Well, but, I mean, who's he arguing for? Is he arguing for Wolf or for... Michael Clark. Well, is he just sitting on? He's sitting on the fence. He doesn't know. Oh, yes. uh, uh, he's had a few responses from the fans out there, um, and uh, well, I guess right, they, they, so. well, yeah, right. Of course, you know, everybody wants to talk to Shane, but uh, but uh, I'm, look, I don't know. It's interesting, there. It's uh, look. Why is he getting involved? He doesn't play anymore. No. Is no. he on the board? No, I don't think he has any day-to-day involvement. So whatsoever. why doesn't he just shut up and, and watch the matches? Well, you would have thought he, he would be a supporter of Australian cricket. Uh, he obviously of course. does have his role. Look, Channel 9, is, I mean, is he just, is he, I don't know, does he just need stay, to stay in front of, he needs to stay in front of mine. Is that what it is with warning? He just stepped over the mark. Stepped over the mark. Yeah, I think this is something he, he, he does not need to be involved in. This is what the Australian team doesn't need. He they don't need it right now, do they? They're trying to. Trying to win a World Cup, um, this sort of stuff can't be healthy. No, no, it's definitely not healthy. So, you know, Shane, if you're listening out there, which you're probably not, but you may have to send you a personal tweet from a show here, but, uh, you know, stick to the boundary line, stick to your commentary, and uh, let the team play. Let Wolf, yeah, let, yeah, let Wolf coach and, and let Michael Clark captain according to that game plan and, and what he wants. And I think Wolf's proven, you know, over his time as Australian coach that he's pretty good at it. So I'd be backing him in to, to get the right result. And he's not shy of saying a few words, good old Wolf, is he? No, from what we understand, no. he, uh, he's certainly not backwards in going forwards, and I think that's what what's required for a man in that job. Um, yeah, he leads from the front as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, man, we, we love him. He's a good old... Uh, good South Aussie. Yeah, that's it. That's why I'm someone from South Australia's running that team there in Australia. But uh, actually, a funny, funny point I'd like to make is uh, down in the Bangladesh, uh, one, of the, one of their bowlers, believe it or not, listen to this, folks, is uh, being sent home for missing the team curfew. He's missed the team curfew and he's on the plane. Now, what, what, what would you think that team curfew would be? If someone said to you, look, we're going to send this player home because he missed the team curfew. Yeah. Send him home, mind you. Yeah. Straight away, as soon as possible. This is the quote. He will be sent home as soon as possible. So what? He, strange, huh? he must have been out to what, 4 or 5 o'clock or something, was it? In the morning? Yeah. 10 p.m. Travis. 10 p.m. and 10, on the play home. 10 p.m. is a curfew for the Bangladesh cricket team. Apparently they need a permission to go past that point. And uh, you, you're hardly home before 
10 o'clock just going out for dinner these days. Final oh, work tonight, indeed. I mean, he's planning to return to the team hotel before 10 p.m. deadline on Thursday, last Thursday. So, uh, it's a. Uh, really? I mean. I, I feel for Al, I mean, uh, if he's going home because he's missed a 10 p.m. curfew, I think that's pretty tough. That's pretty harsh. I mean, surely Bangladesh probably need a guy. I mean, you know. Hey, I mean, no, seriously, I, I've never yeah, heard that before. <laughs> I mean, no. Look, I, get, yeah, I mean, I think we both understand the need for a curfew of some sort at the World Cup, but 10 p.m. is, I mean, they're not school kids. Well, they're yeah. adults, they're men. Well, they, they are. are. I mean, we don't know. I guess that's Bangladesh for them, very harsh, aren't they? So, um, but look, I guess, uh, yeah. That's a that's a fun note to, to end that. Quiz. Well, not fun for Bangladesh. Well, not, not fun for Bangladesh. They didn't play. They got one. Well, they got one point. So that's probably a victory in a way. So they they probably they probably played for the heaven side and up in Brisbane. So, but uh, yeah, look for him. He's going to be on the way home. So uh, yeah, poor guy. 10 p.m. Jeez, can't get over that. Mm. Interesting. But uh, look, uh, we'll uh, we'll be bringing more sport uh, after the break. We'll head into a bit of uh, NBL. Basketball and soccer. Go those sixes. Go those sixes, definitely. Oh, yeah. Take it from me, one punch can be lethal. Throw an angle like this, without warning, without any gloves, it can be deadly. One punch can end his life and ruin yours. It takes a grunt to throw it. It takes guts to walk away. Welcome back all to our fantastic listeners out there. So let's go into uh, our beloved Adelaide 36ers, Travis. Ten wins. Ten on the trot. Ten wins in a row. Now, it's good going. That is fantastic. That is NBA Jam on fire. 105. So they beat, so we've got 105 to 85 for the 10th straight victory. And let's be honest, they should be beating Wollongong. Anyway. Yeah, but it's, uh, no, no small feat winning 10, and 10 on the trot. Yeah, we've got uh, six wins, 22 losses. Um, so not looking good at all, but <laughs> for Wollongong. But yeah. Uh, it takes uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, 10 on the trot. I mean, Adelaide are pretty much sitting pretty now and they've uh, made the playoffs or the finals, whatever you want to call it here in the NBL. Yep. I like to call it the playoffs. But, uh, and they actually start uh, this week, uh, this Thursday, they play the New Zealand Breakers in the best of three series. Now, uh, game one is Thursday in Auckland, so uh, you have to check your TV guides for that. Possibly uh, Foxtel or Channel 10. But, uh, and then the game two is Saturday night at the Adelaide Arena. The good old Clips of Powerhouse. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a powerhouse. Adelaide, Adelaide Arena does not sound tough at all. I mean, really, Adelaide Arena is very. We might need to get some Clips or Clappers. Yes. Next Get the big break. fingers out yeah. as well. <laughs> All right. Got big fingers. Um, but, uh, yeah, so game two is uh, this Saturday. Um, it doesn't actually say evening on the day, but uh, I'll say it's probably Saturday evening. Um, and then game three is Monday, if necessary. Let's let's hope they, this winning streak continues, Travis. Well, I think the Sixers not long ago beat New Zealand in New Zealand, didn't they, as part of this streak? So... Going over there probably doesn't hold too many fears for them at, at this point in the season. No, no. Um, and look there, I mean, any looking basketball, when when a team's on a streak like, like this, and I've seen it, you know, in the NBA before, but mainly in the NBA that I followed very closely. I mean, one of the teams there, Golden State, Warriors pretty much uh, were on 17 wins, I believe, from memory, you know, um, and that's, you know, when, once you're on a roll, and that's what basketball is all about, is getting into that zone, either during the game or by actually winning the games, multiple games, so, yeah, yeah you're, you're right, they're not going to hold any fear, especially if they've beaten before, but being in this kind of zone, that's a very important in basketball. Yeah, absolutely. But it's interesting, the Sixers, with, with a full squad, I mean, they didn't, they didn't have Brock Motor um, over the weekend when they beat Wollongong, so... Of course, it's quite right. Like, yeah. right, so... So, provided other guys a chance to, to step up, and, and what that does, obviously, is then instills confidence into those players. Um, you couple 
that with the fact that they've obviously won 10 in a row, you think um, they would go in just sky high, full of confidence. Um, and New Zealand, you know, have had a pretty good year, but you would think that they'd be, uh, you know, probably worried about facing the Sixers at this point. Uh, yeah, well, looking at the time, I mean, New Zealand's second on the ladder. And we've got Keynes, Taipans on top. So in Perth and third, I mean, sorry, Perth and fourth, they like third. So, you know, it's, it's very um, interesting. And look, it's fantastic. The, the 36 has really started off badly uh, this season and have come up uh, trumps. And, you know, I mean, I watched the finals last year and I watched them lose and it was devastating because they were playing so well. So it's, they're right at the cusp of that championship and that's what they need. That's what this city wants, is craving for. So it is that championship because, oh, Travis, it's been a long time. Well, it has been. I, I, you know, I was talking about this with a main one on the weekend. I think Adelaide could become known again in the next couple of months as title town. I think the Sixers are a good shot, and we'll talk about the A-League, you know, shortly, but uh, we found like United also around the mark. Um, Port, Port Adelaide, they might just win the flag. And, no, no, we'll Travis, the so don't say that. That's, that's just bad. I don't know. Port's not going to win that. I think the Crows are going to win the flag. Come on. Be, be realistic, my lord. Like, we are we're a sensational club. We've got a new coach, new captain, oh, re-energised. Oh, now the cup is starting soon. We'll mention that later. This but. optimism of Crows was anyway, we, we digress. But, um, yeah, look, I reckon the Sixers will win this uh, series. Um, Johnson comes back in, and we talked about that previously. But Joe Wright, um, I don't know, I don't know if he'll win coach of the year, but he's obviously... 